hello there. Nice to see you. Today, I'm going to be taking you along to decluttering my whole house. Sounds dramatic because I only live in a two bedroom apartment in New York City. But let me tell you, I had way more stuff than I think. Even as someone who is a self-proclaimed minimalist, and I put that in quotations because minimalist means something different for everybody, this took me by surprise. It truly did. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my assumptions about decluttering my whole house before I actually did it. The tips and tricks, AKA my strategy for actually following through and doing it. What I learned from this experience and how I feel now. It might be different from what you think, so make sure you keep watching. Hello everyone and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julie. I'm an occupational therapist and minimalist and mom of almost three kids. And I love to talk about simplicity, intentional living, decluttering our lives so that we can go out and do the things that we really enjoy rather than spending time feeling overwhelmed by our stuff and our clutter and not being able to spend time with the ones we love. Make sure that you download my free three day take charge mini course which will help you on your organization journey if you're just getting started or maybe give you some motivation if you're on this journey already and my signature course the organized mom is now open for enrollment i am so excited to have a place to go super deep into habits routines schedules ways that you can really make your life work for you and not feel so trapped especially as a mom of young kids perhaps you're going from one kid to two kids and know that it's only going to get more crazy from here on out then this course is definitely for you so check out all the links in the description don't forget to go ahead and subscribe if you love videos here to improve your life give this video a big thumbs up turn on your notification bell and let's jump in why don't we well to be honest decluttering my house it was a little harder than I thought. My first assumption was, you know, as someone who fairly regularly declutters things, I mean, you see a lot of those kind of videos on my channel, this shouldn't be too hard. Like, the, what am I even gonna declutter? There's nothing to really even find and give away. I was wrong. This took a little longer than I thought, and I wanna preface this by not discouraging you to not start to declutter your home because you're worried about how long these things take. I ended up kind of snowballing with the decluttering, so I would declutter something, then I'd wanna clean it, then it leads me down the road to something else. I also haven't done like a true declutter in a while. So some of the things that I ended up decluttering were a lot of medications medications that had expired, medications for us, medications for our kids, medication for my dog. I don't think I'd looked at that stuff in like three years. So it was good to go through my medicine cabinet and make sure everything is up to date and safe and all that good stuff. I found some extra containers. I found some baby puzzles. I actually decluttered some food. So I was able to find a few food things that I think someone else might enjoy. I decluttered some toiletries with like tiny, tiny bit of bubble bath or whatever it was that was taking up more room just by being there than the product inside. I also found things that I haven't used like hair products or a face mask that I kind of forgot about because it was out of sight, out of mind. I also decluttered a few kids clothes, a few of our clothes, and it feels good to be able to offer those up to a friend that might need them or to donate them. So the strategy that I use with decluttering and I use this regardless of what I'm decluttering is my DMD method. No, not the DMV, but DMD. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that stands for. The first D is for the definitely's. So I find this to be one of the easier categories because these are things that I'm never going to get rid of, that I either need to survive or that I really want or someone else needs. And it's easy for me to keep them. Sometimes I feel like people work backwards because they start off with all the things they don't want first but I recommend starting off with the things that you do want because then you know what kind of space you're dealing with typically I would take everything out and just really assess my space but depending on how much time you have you can definitely do this and then you choose the things that you 100% are going to keep and those get to go back in the cabinet or the closet and only then can you move on to the next category which are the maybes and the maybes 
are those items that obviously you're not sure about, you're on the fence. A really great trick if you're not sure if you're gonna keep them or not is to put them away for six months or even longer and see if you reach for them. If you don't, that's a clear indication that you probably don't need them in your life and you likely have forgotten about them. But sometimes I keep those maybes around for a week or so and see if anything crops up or maybe it's a product that I was on the fence about using and I try it out and see if I like it and if I don't like it then I can give it on to someone else. That's the category that I think a lot of people struggle with and get stuck on but don't let that stop you from decluttering the definitely's and then the third category which is the donates. So this category could be actually physically getting rid of any trash, it can also be donating to an organization of your choice and I also use this category to give things to friends and family that I think might benefit and by having less stuff overall I actually have the bit the bandwidth and the energy to think hey would so-and-so like this item okay I'm gonna take the trouble of mailing it to them and so that way I can actually give back whereas when I used to live in a more cluttered environment with so much stuff to manage there was just no way that I could think about mailing things to other people like one or two items I just wanted to get rid of everything in one big swoop so it's okay if you're on different sides of the spectrum and just know that as you declutter more and more of your life you'll just have so much more energy and patience to send these items to the right places. Part of my strategy also is setting some kind of time limit. Everything doesn't have to be done right now or today, and especially as moms, when you don't have as much control over your time as you did without children, it might be really impossible to do your whole home in one day. And don't let the time that you anticipate this will take to stop you from actually just getting started. But what I do like to do is not set the time frame too far in advance. So you want to say to yourself, I'm going to declutter my whole house, which sounds intimidating, in a week, right? But I'm going to give myself a few days to do that. But by the end of the week, I would have at least started. I'm not going to declutter three months down the line. That's not going to work. So, talking about tips and tricks and decluttering your whole home, I know that psychologically if I tell myself, hey Julie, you're going to declutter your whole house, my brain is going to say, mm, nah, you're seven months pregnant, you need to put up your feet, you can't be doing things like that, that's ridiculous, it's going to take you hours. By knowing that, I reverse engineer how I can kind of trick my brain to help me at least get started. Because for me, especially when it comes to decluttering and organizing, which which actually is something I enjoy. Like I love that feeling of having an organized home. Because of that, I break things down into super manageable, two simple pieces. So if I wanna declutter my whole kitchen, I will start with one drawer. I will start with one cabinet or one area. Like we have an area above the fridge or an area below the coffee machine that I wanted to declutter. And I will literally just focus on that. And that'll be my goal for the next 30 minutes. It also really is helpful when you have small children or you have the excuse of I have no time and you only have 20 minutes. You can get a lot done in 20 minutes. In fact, when I was decluttering under the coffee machine, which is like our tea and stuff I did that in less than five minutes so I promise you your brain is trying to protect you and tells you it's gonna take hours and hours but it doesn't have to be something is better than nothing something else as a tip or a trick is I don't declutter my husband's things because those are his things and there's no point me going in there it's disrespectful if he has set aside something for me to donate that's absolutely fine or we're doing it together totally fine but I left his section of the house out of this video because that's not for me to declutter and you know I want to stay married what can I tell you that being said I also don't go to him for every little decision even though we are living in a house where we consume combined things there are just things that I know he does not care about or does not have the bandwidth to focus on so whether we have five wooden spoons or three he's not gonna notice so to make the executive decision if you can don't be waiting on someone else to tell you whether you can declutter something or not because I know sometimes we do that we want to ask other people's advice or opinions make that decision now because I declutter so frequently you know little bit by little bit and this is what I do for a living I have kind of developed that decision making confidence where I'm like we'll be fine and I always tell myself that you know if I give away something or declutter something that we need it would be unfortunate to have to repurchase it that's not the point and most of the time that never ever happens 
but to calm my brain, if we needed to get something back, unless it was a family heirloom, we could probably do it. So something else that I talk about a lot is cleaning the space before you put things back again. So depending on how much time you have, this is also a great reason to do things in small chunks. So let's take the kitchen example. If you are gonna declutter one single drawer, that's very manageable to take everything out, give that drawer a really good clean, let it air, because let's be real, when last did you allow it to do that? When last were you able to clean something? And it is so much easier to clean when everything is removed and then put everything back in, in the definitely list. I definitely, definitely try to do this as much as possible because I know that this is a great opportunity to clean a space when there's nothing in there. My favorite tip is listening to audiobooks or podcasts while I declutter. And honestly, it makes me look forward to this process so, so much. I basically listen to a whole hypnobirthing book, which is probably nine or 10 hours. I listen to it on one and a half times speed, definitely do that. And I was able to listen to that over the three or four days that I spent decluttering my whole home and doing quite a thorough spring clean, which will also be in a video. So I was able to learn something and get my house looking really good. And then if you really find that you're procrastinating on the clutter, or maybe you get started and then you lose motivation, you get interrupted, you can make it difficult for you to stop. And the way that I've done that in the past, sometimes just unconsciously, but often on purpose, is I put everything on my bed, which means that I can't go to sleep that night until it's at least partially sorted out. I know my husband gets annoyed when I do this, so I'm extra motivated to make sure that I clean it up at least to a manageable level, and it's a great trick to get your butt into gear. All right, so what did I learn from this process? Well, we accumulate a lot of stuff within six months or a year, more than you think. And it's so good to go back and audit what you have. This is why I love moving because you're kind of forced to do this because you don't realize how clutter just creeps in or even not even clutter, things that you were using six months ago or a year ago that now you no longer need. We are changing, we are evolving beings and so is our stuff. Something I found a little challenging that I learned was that it was hard to focus on purely decluttering. I found myself cleaning something here and then going down a rabbit hole and then finding something that lived in one room and then needed to go to another room and then I started going to that room and it's sometimes tough to be focused. And again, it depends how much time you have to spend on this but if you don't have a lot of time make sure you stay 100% focused on the room you're in on the section you're in on the only decluttering part not on the cleaning part and it'll go much much quicker as I mentioned before you do not need to declutter your whole house all at once honestly pick one week to do one room if that's what you feel is manageable for you and that's okay don't stop the actual process of decluttering because you're scared it's gonna take too long progress begets motivation. This was something that I have learned time and again, but once you get started and start to see how things are changing, you just want to keep going. I just want to keep declaring because it's so satisfying to just be able to open up your space and see how amazing it is to have only the things that you really need. The time is now, my friends. Stop waiting for the perfect moment. It's not going to come. We are spending so much more time at home, at least in a large part of the country and the world. It is winter time now, going into spring it is the perfect time if ever there was to get your home into gear before we get into the nice weather and you want to be outside and it's even more difficult to you know stay at home and consolidate what you have the time was yesterday and the next best time is now something that might be you know a little more challenging is that this is an ongoing process it's never really done it's like healthy eating you can't eat one salad and hope that you'll be healthy for the rest of your life and that's all you do if we continually need to maintain our bodies our relationships and our homes are no different so just keep that in mind and you'll be fine something that totally surprised me was my kids woke up the next morning because I was decluttering and organizing things while they were sleeping and they acted like it was Christmas they were so excited to find some new things that I'd taken out, see where things had been rearranged. I think the pantry looks so much better now. Even little kids age five and three can appreciate a little spruce and a little redo of your home. Along those lines, I was absolutely role modeling what it's like to take care of my home, to invest some of my time into it. And it definitely benefits my children because they both wanted to clean everything.
cooking, they were, they were cleaning the fridge and they were cleaning outside. So it definitely triggers something in them that this is a good practice to get into. So how do I feel after completely decluttering my whole home? I feel amazing. It feels like the mess now that my children create is nothing. It'll take 10 minutes to clean up and it's no big deal. I'm not scared of what's in my cabinets. I know what we have. It feels so great. I highly recommend that you take on this challenge and let me know if you do. I'm gonna have a baby in a couple of months and yes, this may be crazy nesting, but honestly, I'm like this anyway. I don't think it's just me. It's that time of year, but I feel like I know where our things are. Our clothing is up to date for as the season changes. I know where containers are so that we can get ready to go on picnics and be outside. And it just feels so good that anything that I'm not using, I can give to someone who may need it. I was able to send some packages to people. I feel lighter. I don't know how to describe it. You have to try it for yourself. So let me know if you want to declutter your home or which room or section of your house you want to get started with. If you feel like you need more support, I totally get it. We all need to start somewhere. So make sure that you download my free mini course, but even more than that, sign up for the Organized Mom signature course so that we can dive deep into your specific concerns and things that may be stopping you from getting started. Something that I ask my clients sometimes when they say, hey, I can never get on top of the laundry or I have boxes that have been sitting in my house for over a year and I just never have the motivation or the time to unpack them. Sometimes I ask the question, what is stopping you from doing the thing that you're planning to do? So if we take the boxes, for example, is it that you don't know what's in there or you don't know where they're supposed to go or it just feels like there are too many? What is the thing that's stopping you from even getting started? These are the kinds of things that we talk about a lot in The Organized Mom and I would love to have you in there so we can dive deep and really help you develop habits that will last a lifetime. So ask yourself, do you need help starting? Do you need help continuing momentum? Do you just feel so overwhelmed? These are questions that are really, really crucial when it comes to decluttering and organizing your life. Leave this info down in the comments. I read and respond to every single one. And if you need more immediate support, I have a Facebook group. The link is in the description. It's totally free to sign up. Come in there and we can chat more. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Please make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up so more people can see it and start to declutter their lives and live their lives more authentically for themselves. Make sure your notifications are turned on. Check out all the resources and I will see you in my next video. Bye.